This PowerPoint will show how to prove trigonometric identities. First of all, an identity is a mathematical statement that is true for all values of the variables for which it's defined. If the identity involves any rational expressions, the denominators cannot have values of zero because division by zero is not defined. And so therefore, any restrictions on the variables must be stated. And we're going to prove several trigonometric identities in this PowerPoint. The first one that we're asked to prove is that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. And so when you start a trigonometric identity proof, start with usually the more complicated larger uh, side. Uh, RS stands for the right side here. The right side is sine theta over cos theta. And then try to simplify to show that it's equal to the other side, which we will call the left side. So I will start with the sine theta over cos theta side and show that it is the same as tan theta. Now remember that sine of an angle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And the cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Now we're dividing two rational expressions, the sine on the top and the cos on the bottom. And so the way we divide rational expressions is we take the numerator one, the opposite over the hypotenuse, and we multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal of adjacent over hypotenuse would be hypotenuse over adjacent. Now, notice that those hypotenuse sides will divide out, and so this simplifies to just opposite over adjacent. Now, opposite over adjacent is the same as tan theta. And so we now have the right side has simplified to tan theta. And tan theta is what was on the other side. So we have succeeded in showing that sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta. And so we, so we say that this is the same as what was on the left side. And so the proof is complete. Tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Flipping over to the second page. Now instead of writing opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse, we're going to use this right triangle and we're going to substitute R in place of the hypotenuse, Y in place of the opposite side, and X in place of the adjacent side. And in this proof, we're going to prove that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Regardless, again, this is an identity, regardless of what angle theta is, sine squared of any angle plus cos squared the same angle is always equal to 1. That's what we're asked to prove here. So again, the sine squared theta plus cos squared side is the larger side. We're going to show that that is equal to 1. So we'll start with the sine squared theta plus cos squared theta side. Now, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it would equal y over r. So substituting y over r in place of sine, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over r. Remember, sine squared means that this y over r is squared. Cos squared means this x over r is squared. And so doing the squaring, y squared plus x squared is what's in the numerator. And the denominators are the same. There's a common denominator of r squared, so we write it over the common denominator. Now, from Pythagoras' theorem, y squared plus x squared should equal r squared. Look at the right triangle. y and x are the two shorter legs in the triangle. r is the hypotenuse. So y squared plus x squared should equal r squared. So we can substitute in place of the y squared plus x squared and r squared. And by that substitution, we now see that we have an r squared divided by an r squared. And it really doesn't matter what value r has. Something divided by itself is always 1. The only exception, of course, is that you cannot divide 0 by itself. So that is what's on the right side. And so the identity is complete. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta does equal 1. Flipping over to the third page, the last page with examples, in example 3, we're asked to prove that 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And so the larger side is the 1 plus tan squared side. So we'll start with the 1 plus tan squared theta side. 
And remember from the first page of the note, tan is the same as sine over cos. So in place of tan squared theta, we can substitute sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Now I'm adding this sine squared theta over cos squared theta to 1, and so I want a common denominator. The denominator, of course, is cos squared theta. The denominator of 1 is 1. So I would take that 1 and multiply it, numerator and denominator, by cos squared theta. And so, in my numerator, I will have cos squared theta times 1, which is cos squared theta, plus this sine squared theta, which is this sine squared theta here. And, of course, they're each over a cos squared theta. That's the common denominator. So writing them both over the common denominator, we have cos squared theta plus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Now, from the previous page, we proved that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta was equal to 1. And so in any trig identity proof, if you've already proven some identity, you're allowed to use that in your next proof. And so we've proved that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1, so we can substitute 1 in place of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Now, look at what we're trying to show this is equal to. We're trying to show that this is equal to secant squared theta. Remember, secant and cosine are reciprocals, so 1 over cos squared theta is the same as secant squared theta. And so now we've, we have our left side is the same as what's on the right side. And so our proof is complete. 1 plus tan squared theta does equal secant squared theta. Last example, number 4 here, we're asked to prove that sine squared alpha divided by 1 minus cos alpha is equal to 1 plus cos alpha. And of course, this is my larger, more complicated side, so I will start with the left side. Now the strategy we're going to use here is some factoring. We also need this cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 identity as well. So remember, from that identity, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. And so if we rearrange that, and there's two versions of that identity which are very useful to remember. If we rearrange for sine squared theta, sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta, or sine squared alpha equals 1 minus cos squared alpha. And so since sine squared of any angle is equal to 1 minus cos squared of that angle, I can substitute in place of this sine squared alpha 1 minus cos squared alpha. Now, 1 minus cos squared alpha is the difference of two perfect squares. 1 is a perfect square, it's 1 squared. And when I say cos squared alpha, well, that's cos alpha all squared. And so we can factor this 1 minus cos squared alpha into 1 minus cos alpha times 1 plus cos alpha. And now the common 1 minus cos alpha is in the numerator and denominator will divide out. And so we're left with 1 plus cos alpha, which is what is on the right side. And so the proof is complete. Flipping over to the last page, on the last page are listed eight trig identities. And these are the most fundamental trig identities. We use these to prove a lot of other identities. On the top left here, you see the reciprocal relations. Uh, sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. Tan is the reciprocal of cotangent. And cos is the reciprocal of secant. secant. The quotient relations, we prove the uh, bottom one. Tan theta is sine theta over cos theta on the first page. And so since cotan is the reciprocal of tan, then cotan should be the reciprocal of this, which would be cos theta over sine theta. Under the Pythagorean relations, we proved two of them, the middle one and the bottom one. Another Pythagorean relation is also cotan squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. And that's the end of the trigonometric identities note.